Welcome to the 50th episode of 7 Days of Science. We thought we'd do something special to celebrate this milestone, so we're going to... A tragic story to start off this week, as Orlando SeaWorld's 30-year-old orca, Kayla, died suddenly after a short illness. This is most unusual, as orcas generally live to be around 50 years old, and they can live up to 90 years in the wild. After the 2013 documentary Blackfish, SeaWorld came under a large amount of public pressure against their treatment of orcas, and they announced they would end their breeding program in 2016. Right, next we've got some news that is actually not from this week, but a little further back. However, it's only just come to our attention this week, and it is pretty important, so we're including it anyway. The World Health Organization is currently preparing a report on the palm oil industry, and recently a first version of it has appeared online. It's pretty damning really, explaining how the industry not only promotes destruction of the environment through deforestation and loss of biodiversity, but also respiratory illnesses in people who live in nearby plantations, as well as describing the seemingly convincing link between cardiovascular diseases and other chronic illnesses and the consumption of palm oil products. The report goes on to illustrate how the industry maximises profits through various means, at the expense of the environment and human health. The report additionally recommends that more research be done on palm oil's effects on health and suggests actions that can be taken by policymakers and the global health community to stop the negative effects of the industry on our planet and our own species. To start off the paleontology news this week, we've got a brilliant report of a Triassic marine reptile that seems to have convergently evolved with a platypus. Eritmeripus is not a new animal, as it's been known about for a while. However, the paper published this week in Nature describes two newly found specimens of the creature that preserve heads, which were previously unknown. And what strange heads they were. Not only do they look disproportionately small and had very small eyes, but they also possess a structure incredibly similar to the bill of a platypus. Even having what seems to be the equivalent of a special bone thought to be unique to the platypus, os paradoxum, it's thought that the reptile must have relied on receptors in the bill to detect prey, no longer needing to use its eyes as much, showing that marine reptiles were actually pretty ecologically diverse at this time, not long after the great dying. Next up, the first of two sauropod-related news items. There's been an interesting study published this week that examined a collection of dinosaur trackways in Morocco, which the researchers noticed preserved footprints where the animals had their feet turned out and to the sides, as opposed to the more common forward-pointing orientation. Statistically analysing fossils from all over the world, the paleontologists have found that some smaller sauropods were able to switch the position of their hands depending on how fast they were moving, and that larger species had four directed forefeet but couldn't rotate them due to their massive sizes. This is interesting since laterally oriented forefeet are the ancestral condition to sauropods, and other lineages of dinosaurs are not able to rotate their hands, so how could sauropods? And finally, a bit more quick sauropod news, some post-cranial bones from a Turiosaurus sauropod has been uncovered in early Cretaceous rocks from the UK, and are therefore the first evidence of their kind for a Turiosaurus in Cretaceous Europe. This is significant since it's more evidence of yet another group of sauropods that were thought to have died out in the Jurassic period, but actually managed to survive into the Cretaceous. That's it for 7 Days of Science this week, we do hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you, and we'll see you on Sunday.